to this story. What's up everybody? Truth Seeker here. This video is sponsored by my tip jar. If you would like to be able to tip me a buck or two, please just click the link in the description below. And thank you to everybody that's already supporting. Your help is what's keeping this channel going. So thank you very much. Now getting to the story. Russian President Vladimir Putin dropped a nuke on Hillary Clinton and the entire Russia collusion witch hunt during a joint press conference with President Trump in Helensky. Putin accused Bill Browder, an American-born British finance man and one of the top investors into Russia, of funneling $400 million into Hillary's campaign. It really makes me wonder how CNN's going to try to spin this one. I'm going to go ahead and roll the clip right here. For instance, we can bring up uh, the Mr. Mr. Browder in this particular case. Business associates of Mr. Browder have earned over one and a half billion dollars in Russia. They never paid any taxes, neither in Russia nor in the United States. And yet the money escaped the country. They were transferred to the United States. They sent a huge amount of money, 400 million as a contribution to, uh, to the campaign of Hillary Clinton. Well, that's their personal case. It might have been legal, the contribution itself, but the way the money was earned was illegal. So we have a solid reason to believe that some intelligence officers accompanied and guided these transactions. So we have a, an interest of questioning them. But we can all, that, that could be a first step and we can also extend it. Options abound and uh, they all can be found in an appropriate legal framework. And did you direct any of your officials? So how is CNN going to spin this one? It really makes you wonder, doesn't it? $400 million from Russia went into Hillary's campaign, not Donald Trump's. Yet we've been spending two years on this Russia investigation thinking that Trump had something to do with changing the outcome of the election for his favor. Obviously, the cheat was in for Hillary and she still lost. Does anybody not see that yet? Yet they're dragging all this out. I mean, people are getting fired left and right. It's exposing the swamp creatures because of this. Trump knew that he didn't do anything wrong. And that's why he 100% went on with this. That's why he didn't fire Mueller. That's why he didn't fire Sessions. That's why everything's still happening to this day. Because Trump knows he's innocent. And all this is doing is bringing out all the swamp creatures. And it's working like a charm. But Lisa Page went on to do her second testimony on Monday at another closed door hearing and just like on Friday getting reports today that she did really really good and they actually obtained a lot more information and things just aren't looking quite so well for Peter Strzok all right the president today blasting Robert Mueller's Russia probe during his summit with Russia's Vladimir Putin saying this investigation has hurt our relations with Russia Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, lawmakers have grilled former FBI lawyer Lisa Page for a second day on her anti-Trump text messages with her former colleague, Peter Strzok, who, by the way, was on the Mueller team. My next guest was just at that closed-door hearing, and he joins me now, Republican Congressman from Arizona, Andy Biggs. Congressman, we're going to get to the president and his comments in a second, but first of all, uh, you're there watching these hearings today. Tell us what's going on and, and your thoughts on where we are thus far. Well, it's just a continuing ongoing interview, and, um, and it's just an alternating sides so that Republicans get an hour, Democrats get an hour, and you go back and forth. And uh, she's been very, uh, uh, very cooperative in that sense. And, and so uh, it's going to go on, in my opinion, probably for a few hours more. Mm -hmm. uh, any difference between her and, say, Peter Strzok? We saw Peter Strzok, and he was, um, <laughs> shall I say, a bit on his high horse, uh, considering. Uh, <clears throat> his own issues, but uh, he insisted that, you know, there's just no way the FBI could ever be tainted in its thinking or bias, et cetera. Is she maintaining that as well? Well, I can't comment about what she said because it's, it's in, that, in that kind of confidential mm -hmm. closed door mode. But I will just say this, that, that uh, uh, let's just leave it at this to say Peter Strzok was filled with arrogance and hubris, if I can put it that way. Okay. <laughs> You could tell in all their body languages that there are some really interesting things that was talked about in the room and they can't tell us and they want to. You could tell they want to. I'm pretty sure probably someone's going to leak it. But if the Republicans are coming out of those hearings with a smile on their face, then I'd say it's pretty good signs that logic actually finally was heard in there.
Lisa Page is 100% cooperating because she really has nothing else to lose. She already lost her job, she already lost the relationship that she started, and she lost credibility, respect, whole bunch of stuff. I mean, she already lost so much things already. While Agent Strzok still has his job and has people trying to fight for his credibility and his integrity of the FBI. Which is why I was really glad when Gomer actually called him out saying, Do you look into your wife's eyes? I love that part. That was like the best part in that whole entire Congress hearing. That really was. Because that's true. If the person that he's actually sleeping with can't trust, then what makes you think the United States can? So I think it was a pretty accurate point that Louis put out there. I mean, literally, the deep state's house of cards is collapsing right now in front of all their faces. I mean, I'm still sitting here, like, dumbfounded about the fact that there was $400 million from Russia put into Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign. Yet they say Trump was the one that colluded with Russia. Amazing how that works, isn't it? Like I've said before many times... If they point fingers to try to blame anybody for anything, the odds are that they're the ones that's doing it to start with. And that's the way it's been going for a long time. The boy that's cried wolf story has been repeated over and over and over so much that no one even wants to listen to them anymore. But they do need to start listening because they need to realize the stuff that they're telling on is really themselves. And disgraced former FBI attorney Lisa Page deposed on Capitol Hill for a second day giving her testimony, her comments, conflicting with fellow agent Peter Strzok's testimony last week, according to members within the closed-door hearing. And joining us tonight, Chris Farrell, Director of Investigations Research, uh, as well, for Judicial Watch. Chris, great to have you here. Uh, Strzok is suddenly, uh, I mean, taking on a different uh, sort of, uh, uh, almost a halo here. Uh, the House is uh, in absolutely... Uh, fascinated by her and can't say enough good things about her forthrightness. Well, I think Paige is the opportunity to, be, to become the anti strock She's going to look for an immunity deal or at least be treating, being treated as a cooperating witness. Uh, she's seen for, from the last week what her boyfriend was doing, and she's a, probably a pretty sharp attorney. She sees an opportunity or an opening to kind of recast herself, and I think she's taking advantage of it. The Freedom Caucus, Mark Meadows, the chair, sending uh, off that letter to the Justice Department saying we've, we've got another example of tax that weren't turned over as we had requested, but suddenly these tax between uh, Andrew McCabe, the former deputy director of the FBI, uh, and uh, Lisa Page are, are turning out to be revelatory, talking about a meeting with the White House counsel uh, dated October 16th of 2016, implicating possibly the President of the United States? I want Obama deposed. Uh, look, there's substantial evidence. There's a, uh, an earlier uh, uh, text message from Page where she says, POTUS wants to know everything right. we're doing. How much more evidence do we need? At what point does Mr. Obama come out of hiding and offer his version of the facts? That's well, my question. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and if, if the mandate, the scope of the special counsel is Russia uh, collusion, uh, then why not to bring up the uh, flexibility remark by President uh, Obama in 2012? Precisely. Uh, you know, talking about how much more flexible he can be on issues sur surrounding Russia. And all, uh, the, all the hysteria over hacking is all on Obama's watch. Yeah. Where's the accountability? I want him deposed. Yeah, I, you want him deposed? I, I think it's a terrific idea because no one else in his administration seems to be willing to be deposed. Perhaps he would volunteer because he did say he was going to have the most open, transparent administration in American history, remember? So maybe he'd like to make good on it, at least that promise. It, it would be nice to see. Uh, the, this president under attack from all of these folks. Uh, who are, are you talking about? Well, he sh what do they think this is? A high school football game where he's supposed to go in there and thump his chest and bump Putin aside? I mean, what are they thinking? Uh, these are some of the most puerile, ignorant, uh, and, and ungifted uh, people ever serve in elected office. It's a phony narrative. It's it, there's, all of these, all of these, all this posturing and this verbiage today. You can throw in Mr. Brennan, Mr. Irrelevant to the, to the mix. 
uh, with all kinds of reckless language. These are all Speaking false. of deposing someone, I'd like to depose, have him deposed as well. He's on the list, believe me. Uh, but, you know, look, this is all false choice arguments. It's manufactured, contrived outrage. Look, I'll go back to what the president asked. Where's the DNC server? Where's the Awan brothers server? They were both hacked virtually at the same time. Yeah. Think there's no connection? No connection, no, nothing to see here, move along, I think seems to be the standard answer out of uh, the leadership of both the FBI and the Department of Justice, and of course, the Obama White House. I literally say it's game over for them. But wait, there's more. Putin actually called Mueller's bluff and actually offered to help to interrogate the suspects, backing Mueller into a corner and forcing him to cough up his evidence. Now what is Mueller going to do? The summit came just after the Justice Department announced indictments of a dozen Russian intelligence operatives for allegedly hacking Democratic targets in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Putin has previously told Trump that Russia did not meddle in the 2016 presidential election. He repeated those denials Monday. And when asked whether he would extradite the 12 Russians allegedly involved, Putin instead detailed a plan which Trump called an incredible offer. Putin offered to question the 12 indicted for meddling in the election and added that Mueller's team of investigations could be present for questioning if U.S. officials would reciprocate. He suggested this would mean Russian agents could be present for questioning U.S. officers of interest to them. Now, I think Mueller was actually trying to rest on the idea that he's indicting people from Russia and they wasn't going to cooperate. They would never come over to the United States to be questioned, and so he could just leave the guilt floating in the air right there. But instead, Putin is actually saying, yeah, we'll cooperate, and we're actually inviting you to come over with your investigators, and we're also going to interrogate together. And now this will give Russia the opportunity to interrogate our intelligence officers to figure out what all this mess really was about. So now we got to see if Mueller's going to actually be willing to do that or not, or if he's going to just back out of the 12 indictments. Amazing how this investigation could even actually go on, knowing the fact that it was Hillary's campaign that was actually involved with the Russian collusion the whole entire time. I mean, there really is no way that they could back out of this now. This is totally over. Game over for them. And I think they need to actually have some real investigations start opening now on this. I mean, it's crazy. I just can't believe all this even happened in the last two years. And I would make anybody that's sitting there standing up for this whole entire phony witch hunt to also be a part of the investigation because they're just as guilty too. It goes for all those Democrat Congress members and everything. Any government official that was protesting this whole entire Peter Strzok hearing should also be put under investigation because they are just as guilty. All of them knew the whole entire time that there was no Trump-Russia collusion. They all knew it. But they theatrically played these roles of people that were angry and outraged and everything, knowing that it was all a lie. And it really shows you how crooked these people are. I really doubt they're going to get any votes this coming up election. I really doubt it. The walk away movement is huge. I mean, it is like way bigger than what I ever thought it would be. And I think it's because of all this circus that was finally displayed in front of the world. So people can actually see what these people are really doing. Trump literally just exposed these morons in front of the whole entire world and he barely had to lift a finger. Amazing how it works, isn't it? What do you guys think about all this? Definitely leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace! Please subscribe to our channel, like our video.